Um, it's 7 p.m. on January 2016th. I'll call to order this meeting of the Brattleboro Developmental Review Board. Um, <clears throat> the first order of business are opening remarks that I make before every meeting. If you've been here before, I'm sorry you have to listen to these again. The purpose is to explain what's going on here to people who haven't been here, so bear with me. At the DRB, we hear applications for land use development in the town of Brattleboro and appeals of zoning administrator decisions. Procedurally, the Development Review Board operates on the record. Broadly, this means that we take a clear record of testimony from the applicant and any interested parties, and then issue a written decision with our findings. Applicants and members of the public should be aware that as we are on the record, this is your opportunity and your only opportunity to comment on and provide evidence relating to an application. In the event our decision is appealed to the Environmental Court, the court will not take or consider additional testimony at its hearing, but will look at the evidence from this hearing, the regulations or applicable law, and determine if the evidence here supports the findings and decisions of this board. Only interested persons that participate in this proceeding may appeal a decision made by this board, so I strongly encourage all of you to speak up at the hearing. As we're on the record, we're going to ask that you affirm that your testimony will be truthful. So with the applicants and anyone who thinks they might possibly speak regarding an application, please stand and I'll administer the oath to you. Okay, do you hereby swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give in the cause under consideration will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth under the pains and penalties of perjury? Okay. Um, and ma'am, if you change your mind, just remind me and I'll swear you in. Applicants require a majority vote of the full board to succeed. That's four votes out of seven. If we do not have a full board present to hear your application, we'll consider a request to continue your application to the next public meeting. As you see, we have a full board here tonight. Um, after taking testimony, the board will close the public hearing and may vote on your application. The board will issue a written decision within 45 days of the close of the hearing. While we may vote on an application, it is the written decision that's eventually issued that controls a timeline for appeal. It should be noted that the town of Brattleboro is a party with an interest in land development applications. The town does not have a special status before this board. Documents provided to the board by the town planning department, town attorney, or other town departments will be considered in exactly the same way or manner as information from the applicant and all other interested parties. Our first order of business is to approve the minutes from our previous meeting, which was December 21st, 2015. So move. Second. Second. Okay. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Uh, Mr. Pan, has our meeting been properly warned? Yes, it has. Okay. Um, this is the portion of the meeting where any of us who believe we may have conflicts of interest with any of these applications or applicants or have had any ex parte communications regarding any of these applications should step forward and say so. Uh, I've got to make use on the first one, 204. Okay, so Bushy is out on 204. Brian, who are, who are our alternates right now? Dave Okay, he's the only alternate. Yes. Okay, so. Mr. Whittle, you are appointed to 2015-204. Are there any other um, conflicts of interest or ex parte communications anyone needs to disclose? Okay, hearing none, um, we'll move forward with our first application, which is E&C Properties. Uh, if you could come up. Now, before we, before you start telling us about your project, um, the planning office gave us a memo today. Did you get that? No. You, you should take a look at it, I think, before we start. You can have my cut. And what the memo suggests essentially is because this is more or less a new plan that 
Thanks. That um, <coughs> instead of considering this an amendment of an application, the application that's been warned, which is for a 7,200 foot square foot, 7,200 square foot, three story, six unit building, that, well, if they're suggesting we deny it and, and you file a new application. I don't know how you feel about that. Well, do you do you have to take their suggestions, or can you no. use some common sense here and go through the plan with me and see if no, we, if we have no obligation. We, we have no obligations to do what the planning board. Right. I, I mean, what the planning office suggests us. Um, I, but because that issue might make you want to come back and refile the application, I thought we should talk about it first. Because if it gets denied tonight, it I can't refile again no you can that's what they're suggesting but I don't want to get it tonight tonight I'd like to get it passed tonight it's the same thing as I just did on Chestnut Street I've done in Brattleboro for years this is this is a pretty basic I'm thing. not suggesting you shouldn't do this yeah I, I, I just I'm it, pretty sure we're in parameters where we need to be to make this happen and okay give it up quite a bit already I, I don't know where this is coming from this is brand new to me I have been to the fire department and they do not have any problem with this Oh, I totally understand. I, I, I'm only asking you because if you did want to file a new application, it would obviate the need for us to do this. So I didn't want to well, talk. Why would I prolong it and go through this again? Why wouldn't I just meet you tonight on it? I, I'm not suggesting you should. I'm not suggesting you should. I didn't know what you'd want to do. Am and I, I want... giving something up here, Brian? Uh, just to jump in, John, one of our, our primary concerns is procedural. It's so different from what was warned that... Um, well, that, that was under the advice of what I could do. You know, it's definitely a less intense use than you originally proposed, but it's still it's different from what we put in the paper. We're concerned that members of the public have the opportunity to know what's being reviewed. So there's that aspect. Um, and it just seems like a substantial change. So in some ways, just taking it as a fresh application. Like well, then you have to go to the new things, wait another month, and submit it again. So if I get denied tonight, can I reapply at the new with the new zoning regulations and just go through it again then? Am I risking anything by going in front of this board tonight? Like a No, I think it, if we denied it for the reason that the warning was not correct, that what you're proposing isn't consistent with the warning, in my view, you'd be free to file a new application so that it could be warned properly. And I don't want you to think I'm telling you what to do. No, I need your advice. It, it, I, I'm asking. You're not telling. I'm asking you. Right. What you think? Well, I don't know. I, I don't want to advise you what to do. I'm just telling you that if you wanted to withdraw it, we should just do that to save time. But if you want to go forward, no, we... I absolutely want to go forward. I, okay. I think it should pass. I don't. I can't imagine okay. anybody coming up with anything. That... Okay. So pardon me for raising these procedural things. Tell us about the new version of this project. Okay, the new new version, like if you were worried about the public being warned before, this is, before we started, it was four apartments, two small retail stores. We took out the stores because of parking. We took out one of the apartments just to make it a smaller building. So if anybody was worried about something before, they certainly would have been already been here. This isn't that much different. It's actually less people. So. That doesn't really propose a problem, I don't think. Now, I got some bioretention areas in there that'll more than handle all of the runoff from the house and the, and the driveway. Um, we've got, uh, you know. What type of roof is it? What type of roof? Roof, is it gabled or flat? It'll be gabled roof, okay. yep. yep. And it'll come off each yeah, it'll probably the north, off the north and the south side there. Yeah, and maybe okay. even the other one if we hip it. You know, I'm, I, I've already designed three buildings, couldn't get them through, so I figured I'd get the footprint approved and tell you I'll do something beautiful there. Okay. You know, it'll look, it'll look nice. It'll be gables, but it'll split up the rainfall around the edge. And, okay. You know, those bioretention areas will take all of the water. Right. That's what I'm getting at. That yeah, water's going to go where they are. All of it. And, okay. Uh, there's still the coverage I don't think is that much. It's, uh, what are you allowed for coverage without bio retention areas? 65, 70%? 60% of the department. Yeah, so it's almost there anyways. It's uh, 2,500 square feet of grass there and you know 8,000. So we're already almost there without those things. So I got it covered. Do, do I? I'm covered by twice as much. Do I understand this correctly? There's 
two or three spots on the left as you come in the driveway. Yeah. And then you can drive around the building yep. and there's three other spots. Three spots, one of which is a handicap. Yep. Is that meant to be a fourth spot on the farthest north side there? Uh, no, I believe that's just, like, believe we just tried to put three back there. Um, yeah, no, that's, uh... That, you see that little... That little sliver? The little sliver there. After the third right spot. Yeah. I, I just wanted to make sure... Yeah, yeah. He might have changed the lines a little bit. We may have to do something so they're angled this way just so they whip in and back. Oh, okay. Like that. but, but that's way more than you got at any supermarket or anything for backing up, turning around. Sure. I think it's, I don't know what it is, 20, 22 feet in any supermarket. you got more than that there. So, so you shouldn't have any problem getting in and out of there. Six total spots, right? Yep. Okay. Uh, five, I think, isn't it? Two in the front. In the back. Yeah, five. Oh, okay. So you can't so park. One for each apartment and then one for each, one a half for each guest. Is that little sliver, John, gonna, is that grass or is that just pavement that's extra? Or, or is it going to be paved or is it dirt? Or? It'll be paved, yeah. yeah. We'll probably eventually. I mean, it'll be so dirt that, for a while. But. It's just extra space. That yeah. Then you can either make the spaces a little bit wider. Or, yeah, exactly. Right. <clears throat> Uh, you know, like, I just bought a lot up on Chestnut Street a couple of years ago. Little tiny, tiny lot, 60 by, I don't know, 80 or something, not very big. Came in for a four family. I got approved. Went back to the customer. I said, we're all set. Started the job. I got a visit. Uh, can you bow out of this and just do a three family? We made a mistake. No problem. Do a three family. Now here I'm trying to get a three family in a bigger lot, in a nicer area that's zoned for it, that they're asking us to do. And it's and it it doesn't seem I, I don't even know why it would it's not like I'm now I'm building a, a you know a circus thing or something. I'm just it was an apartment house with two small John, stores. I don't want you to get the wrong idea. Right. I'm just trying to put my drive my point home for oh, some common sense here. Certainly, certainly. We're asking the same questions as we would uh, any other one. Yeah. It's unusual. I don't think the planning uh, department has ever raised the issue of whether the warning's right or not. And yep. I just wanted to talk about it first. Oh, well, I'm glad all. you told me. I wouldn't have had any way of knowing that if you hadn't told me. Right. And if you want to go forward, that's fine. And, and we're just going to ask the same questions we'd always ask yep. us. And yep. You shouldn't view us as prejudiced by this memo because we're not. Nope. Um, we'll talk about what they said and we'll talk about the parking and the usual stuff that we do when we do this review. That's yep. all. What, where's the trash collection? Well, it's only three family. I think they could they probably take the two work. bags a week each and put them out by the road like everybody else in town does. I, didn't, I don't think I need a dumpster for these, these people. Do you, do you have a, uh, an idea of where the snow will go when the snow plow does the lot? Well, we got uh, snow blowers for one, so we'll snow blow it wherever we have to. Okay. And uh, I'm sure we can keep it on our property pretty much. We've got a pretty big border around there. I own dump trucks and loaders and stuff, so if I get a pile, I'll just scoop it up and take it away. About, um, about how much room is there in front of the north spaces if you wanted to push snow out there? Back to the property line? Yeah. I, I realize well, it's not over a straight. To the, over to the right, it's about eight feet, and uh -huh. in the back, it's about four, and on the left, it's about four, and it's all woods back there. So if we snow blowed it back there, I'm sure nobody would have any problem with snow. There's the the, the new plan for the storage is nowhere near this. It's oh, well, it must be. I'm talking about the east side. Like if you were the pushing the east side, we'll just snow blow it right to the left, like anybody else would. Oh, no, I understand that. I, I'm just curious about what the distance is from those parking spaces to the par property line. Well, it says four feet if that's where you're talking about. Yeah, this thing here says four feet. Yeah. But all that land to the left of there is a graveyard with a 30 feet of lawn there. You know, it's not. Wait, I think. Is there a creek there? Is there a creek? No. Okay. No, nope, there's no creeks. In fact, where it says existing swale, that's exactly what it is. It's a very light 
very light swale that takes it all the way right down through there. The creek's on the other side of the, the cemetery. Oh, I, right. I see yeah. what our misunderstanding is. I was talking about the parking spots around the back. Yeah. So if you wanted to push the snow through the front of those spots. Yeah, eight feet. Okay. It's eight feet to the property line? Well, it looks like it. It looks to me like it is on this scale. I thought it looked like there was more there. Oh, I see. I see. I'm, mis I'm misreading the map. Maybe it's 10. It's at an angle, too, so it'll handle a little more than just a flat spot. No, it's my mistake. It's my mistake. I thought the 50-foot measurement was the property line. Oh, oh, okay. I see what yeah. you mean. Yeah, okay. Um, do you think there's enough room between the roof on the new part and that handicapped space where the snow won't come off the roof onto the Oh, oh no snow's coming off. This would, be a, this would be a shingle roof for sure. Oh, okay. I'm a fan of snow staying right on the roof. Okay, okay. And you said you talked to the fire department? Yeah, I talked to Mike McCossie yesterday. I brought this in. He looked over and said, I got no problems with that. He said, if I had it my way, I'd have your driveway come straight out, but he understood the, the visual thing. Oh, you mean as opposed to sort of the... Yeah, when I drew this know. first, this is actually what we started with, this plan. And we went, the town, and I had the driveway come straight out up top. Mm -hmm. They said they were concerned because you need 25 mile an hour, you need about 275 feet. Mm -hmm. We had about 265. So we had to push it to the other side. Of the, that's why I got a crisscross in front of there because... The town came up, Hannah came up, I think Brian came up with Hannah, and they said, we'd like you to keep it back on the other side. It's very close, I but see. we'd like you to keep it there. And it does make the difference of the 275 or not. We got 300 about from where it is now. Okay. And it's far more than what some of the other roads coming out onto there, some of the other properties got. Um, are those three dogwoods gonna be the only landscaping <coughs> aside from what's in the retention ponds? I doubt it. We're big on landscaping. We'll probably put a bunch <coughs> of shrubberies in between there. There's already a bunch of growth in there, too, that won't be getting decimated. It's on the other side of the property line. It's from the, you know, ongoing stuff growing there. So is any of it's it pretty gonna, thick through there. Is any of it going to go into that swale on the road by the mm -hmm. sidewalk? Is any of the... Is, are you going to put any landscaping on that swale? Yeah, I'd like to. I, and, and we were going to draw it in, but we thought it might, you know, uh, actually, I think we put quite a few in and we took them out just to show you where the swale was. We thought it might mess everybody up on where it was going to be, but... Eventually, there's going to be some sort of landscaping plan, though? Yeah, well, we put enough in here that between the retention centers and the side that we thought anybody would want. I mean, okay. we'll, we'll probably do more just because that's how we do stuff, you know? Sure, sure. Do you enter each unit separately, John? Will they each have separate external entrances? They'll have separate external ones. Um, there'll be a no. There'll be a vestibule, front and back. Okay. It'll head you into downstairs, first floor, or upstairs. Okay. And then there'll be an escape from everywhere. Like that needs to be. That's what the stairway on the left side yeah. is. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> Can you tell us a little bit about the lighting in the parking lot? Yeah, I don't think we're going to need anything but a shielded light on the house, like you would with any any um, three-family house on Oak Grove Street or Belmont Avenue or any of those. They all just a shielded light. So it'll be like one on each side. Yeah, one in the back. I've got one in the back and one in the front corner. Uh, I think that'll probably do it. It's pretty high building, so you'd be able to get the you'd be able to get a pretty good spread of light. Do other people have questions for Mr. Brunel? This is a uh, three unit, you said. Is yep. it a basement unit? Yep. First floor or second floor? Yep, yep. exactly. Mm -hmm. So it won't look, you know, gigantic from the road, but it'll, you know, it'll look nice. Fortunately, it'll look really good. 
<laughs> what kind of shining will you use, do you know? Vinyl, and probably the shakes. They just look okay. so nice. If it wasn't the shakes, would it be the simulated clabberts? Yes. Okay. Yep. Be a Vermont, Vermont style, you know, dormers, and, you know, be a little porch, uh, covered porch, won't stick out from the building, it'll be in set facing the east view, so you see a nice spindle railing from the road, look like a nice, nice looking house. Other questions from members of the board? Just what end is the vestibule? There's one on each end. Oh, there's one on each yes. end? Yes. Okay. So the handicap is right there. Right yes. It, it, do I correctly understand it's right by the little dotted area? Yes. Okay. Yep. Other questions from members of the board? Right there. No, I'm good. Mm -hmm. Are there any comments from members of the public? Could you just come up to the sure. microphone and say who you are yep. and explain if you're a neighbor or you're a butter or something like that? Yep. Sam Haskins. I'm a trustee with the VFW. Okay. We're right across the road. And it was one to six units that I we read in the paper and I heard it's gone to three. And we were we we were concerned well it said a variance and we didn't understand what the variance was or is, if there is still a variance because of uh, the three now, I don't know if that's necessary to have that variance. You, you mean a waiver? A waiver, I'm sorry, yeah. you're right. Well, we just yeah. had training on this yeah. at okay. 5 so o'clock. Is there yeah. still a waiver? Um, it has to be. Is he still, does he yeah, still, yes, he doesn't? because it's three family. Just this, I asked Brian, just because it's three family, you have to get it. Yeah. I, oh, you just have to go to the board, but there's no waiver. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think oh, it's, I think, I think, but I think it's now entirely within the limits for dimensions and, and, and everything else that yeah. a regular place would be in the ordinance. Okay. The, the first plan was for a substantially larger building. That would have required a waiver. And that's what we were concerned with, with six units across there is parking. Okay. We didn't want overfull parking coming into our parking lot. Okay. Right here. Okay. And that's what we're, we were concerned with. Yep. Okay. Sure. We're concerned. And the, the other concern is uh, when we went up there, um, there was a, uh, when we came before the board, the board was concerned with noise from our establishment for the houses that were there. And now those houses are all gone, except for the one in the middle. Okay, and nobody's been in this property since like 2003 or four. And the lady that was there prior to that, I mean, she was a great neighbor. I mean, she never had, we had, didn't have any problems. Good. So we're concerned, is our noise going to be a problem with your tenants, or is the tenant's noise going to be a problem with us? So to get back here, to get back <laughs> to... It depends on tenants. To get to your first question, okay. now that you know that it's a three-unit proposal with five spaces, does that take away the fear that you had that your parking lot would be affected by this property? With five, you got three. Um, what are they? What are they? Uh, one bedroom, two bedroom. They're going to be two bedroom, and they're going to basically be the overflow of old people from up top. Is our plan? We have a lot of people that are looking for something a little not as quite as expensive as what we're building up the road. Pretty sure that's what we're going to fill it with. They're the best tenants that are out there. And they, we got a we got a list of them a mile long. I don't see why we're not going to do that. But um, you know, it's like anything else. When you're going to like, when I put a an apartment house anywhere in Brattleboro, all the people next to it, you know, you 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 tell people to be respectful and hope they are. And you know, you guys, when they move in, they know you got a VFW there. If they got a problem with the noise, they should have thought that before they moved in. Mm -hmm. I don't think either anybody's going to be a problem there quite a ways apart from each other. I mean, houses in town are eight feet apart. They don't worry about it. You're 100 feet away, more than that, right. 150 well, feet away. Well, the board was concerned when we went there with the noise from the BFW. Right, but you just, just the tenant, but they the just, houses that were there. Just to let you know, there's a, there's a noise ordinance in Brattleboro. If from someone else's property, the noise is 70 decibels from the adjacent property, is that what it is? 70 decibels. Or more than 70 wrong, decibels, yeah. then whoever's causing that noise is committing a violation. If this was your application or an application for a bar or a place that might have live music, 
Um, it's one of the issues we take up, but generally for a private house, we figure if you've got bad tenants, call the police, but we generally don't look into attaching. I mean, I'm not so concerned about conditions. the noise there. I'm kind of no. concerned about the noise from the VFW because we've had it pretty well made. But no you were there made. first. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> and when you the parking now, back to the parking. Sure. How many are all three got two bedrooms in them? I mean, most people, if there's two people in the house, they have two vehicles. Uh huh. Today. No, you, you know, you know? You know, I got a whole bunch of apartment houses, and I don't, I don't have to supply a whole parking lot of things. So I tell them, you got there, don't park over there. It's part of the lease. It's easy. So if if we have a problem, we come. Go away. I don't care. <laughs> not my problem. It's not my land. It's it's yeah, not. Yeah, but you're the only one who wants to put this in. So, so what? If if well, my hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. This is a hearing. He's the, the way we do things here. You address your concerns. Okay, I'm sorry. No, it's okay. I'm not blaming yeah. either of you. I just don't want you two having this back and forth here. Yeah. You tell us your concerns, and we we interrogate yeah. Mr. Brunel here. And and. Well, I, I, I think we have concerns that there's two bedrooms in each apartment, and there is concern that there may be more than one car per apartment. Okay. Okay? Sure. And then you're talking about visitors coming there. There's another concern. And that's a real small lot. Okay? So that would be our major concern. It's not, the, it's not so much the noise. It's sure. the parking. And we certainly do not want them in the VFW parking lot. We have enough problems. We had to come before this board and say, hey, we had to provide so many parking spaces ourselves. Right. And we don't want our neighbors taken away from us. Sure. Okay. Okay? Thank yes. You. Thank you. So how do you respond to that? Uh, well, we get the required parking places, and I'm not going to worry about it. I've got a bunch of apartments in town. I don't have any problems with tenants parking anywhere bothering anybody else. I don't expect it here. Do you have a uh, in mind whether it's going to be one space per apartment? Sure. You do want to do that? What do you mean one space per apartment? Each each apartment gets one space. Yeah, I'm not telling have. you what to do. I'm just that's asking. That's what they have. And that's then there's a half a space spare for each apartment. Isn't that how uh, the... Uh, yeah, that you have the required, but he's... Yeah. Just, I think he's I, just I'm asking. not suggesting that you're violating the ordinance i was asking you how you planned to structure it with your tenants oh yeah okay oh yeah and i mean there's another spot back there if they have a guest and we say you know if you need a guest for a while they're going to have to move to let the other people out the guest spot spot can be way in the back there it's i, I i'm pretty sure they can get along with everybody up there and not and not go you know parking vehicles all over the place okay we're going to target people with, with single people, anyways. But mm -hmm. it is what it is. It's an apartment with two bedrooms. Okay. You know, they might need a. They might need a. You know, they might have a guest or something. You know, they can sure. use the guest part for the week. Thank you. Are there any other members of the public who wish to speak regarding this application, or Mr. Pan? Is there going to be an outdoor private space for each unit? Well, there's going to be. Uh, porch and there's some grassy areas on the side there is, is the porch under the roof is that why it doesn't yeah, yeah. okay yeah absolutely yeah there's grass spots in the back and on the side I mean I don't anticipate the, the tenants we're going to use need much space out there if they need to go for a walk there's a lot of space around there to walk okay what if they wanted to Put a barbecue or something out. Yeah, they get, that's what I mean. There's plenty of room for that. Jesus, there's a eight by eight by sixty <laughs> side there. It's all going to be nice flat level grass <laughs> area. <laughs> Around the back, there's a nice area next to that detention center to have a picnic table and some benches. Oh, right in there. Uh, yes. I guess Can I'm kind of concerned if you. Um, what about children? We're not going to have children there. We'll just so we're it's restricted. Older. We'll we'll see who's coming to rent it. We're, it's brand new apartments. We we're pretty picky on who we rent to, and if it's not big enough for kids, we won't have kids there. If there's enough yard, we won't have kids. We target mostly 55 and older apartments. That we have. We're not planning on renting this to kids that need a big playground. Mm -hmm. We're going to rent it to tenants that will stay there. You know, when you have an apartment building. 
you target the tenants for who's going to work best in the apartment building. <laughs> people downtown on Main Street, you don't rent it to people with kids that need a playground. You know, you, you got target groups that you go for. Yeah, worst case scenario, you're not going to rent it to somebody with three kids that can't do anything. <coughs> Is there going to be a porch on uh, upper and lower? Yep. Other questions? John, do you have a uh, side view of the place? No, because I haven't quite drawn it yet because I'm not, but I've drawn two already and they look beautiful and I'm like, you know what, I'm going to get this approved and then I'll put some roofs, dormers on there and you guys know how I build. It'll be, it'll be, mm -hmm. a, you know, beautiful thing to drive by and look at on Putney Road. Okay. Um, my suggestion is that we take a quick moment for, um, what do we call it, executive session? Deliberative. Deliberative session. Yes. To address the legal issue that the planning department waived, I expect we wouldn't need more than 10 minutes, maybe even less. Does it, do you guys agree with that or do you want to do it out yeah. here? I'm fine. Okay, yeah. so let's have a quick motion to go so deliberative moved. session. Second. Second. Okay. All those, in, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 We'll be back in less than 10 minutes. Less than 10 minutes. Session, and we concluded two things. Uh, the first thing is that this is a reasonable application, parking, landscaping, everything like that. Everyone on the board feels that this is an appropriate plan for approval. Um, if we did approve it, we would approve it with the conditions that you get fire department approval, Department of Public Works, a landscaping plan, and the shielded lighting, and that tenants not park in the VFW lot. The, the one issue that uh, the board had was that the plan uh, was not received by the town until yesterday and that they didn't have a plan, an opportunity to meaningfully comment. Ordinarily, if this was a new application, it would have to be filed with 21 days notice so that they could comment. So um, the board is prepared to approve the application. We want to continue it till the next meeting, which is February 17th, simply so that the town could get the opportunity it would have to respond to any application normally. Who, who um, do you mean by the town? Planning staff, town attorney, select board, anyone. Um, I mean, the, 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 planning, the planning board raised the issue, and we concluded that because they generally have that opportunity, we should give them the opportunity here as well. Um, so we're going to move to continue it to the February 17th, 2016 meeting. And, and, and we're just letting you know that we feel it's a perfectly appropriate plan and, and that what you're doing here is consistent in our opinion at this time with the ordinances. We're just doing this to try to maintain um, a reasonable notice to all of the interested parties, one of whom is the town. Okay? Sure. Uh, so a motion to continue? So moved. Second. Okay. okay, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, we'll see you February 17th. Thank Thanks, you. guys. Thanks. Okay, the next application is 2015-220, uh, Delta Epsilon. We received a request to continue that matter to February 17th, 2016. Um, if someone makes the motion, we can take that up. So moved. Any discussion or reason why we shouldn't do that? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, we also have application 2015-242, Brattleboro Museum and Arts Center. Uh, that application, that applicant likewise requested a continuance. Uh, it's appropriate to make the motion. So moved. Second. Second. Okay, any discussion why we shouldn't do that? Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, the final application is 2015-248. Um, Josephine, is it Dominici? Yes. I'm oh, sorry. I had a 50% chance. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, Ms. Dominici, if you could sit at this table, what we, what we traditionally do is have you just tell us a little bit about your project.
diagram shows that the property has a three about a three hundred foot frontage on a um, on the back side of a pasture. It's not on the street. It's a right away full pasture to the front of the property. So the front of my property is not on the road. It's actually on the back of the other, of my neighbor's property. You have to cut through their field to get to my property. So the road is actually on the right of way out on the other side of my neighbor's property. So if you go up Olson Hill, where is it situated going up the hill? It's on the left. Is it past it's the pond? Yes. Have, do you know where the you know where they pass where the alpacas are? Right through the middle. Right through the so middle. So there's yes. alpacas on either side. Where, where are you in relation to his house? Um, just what, just for since there are right. people at home. You know, I'm sorry. Can you identify the, the, him? The, your, your neighbor here. That's our neighbor. Right. right. Are so, you are you before him? No, no. Um, he, well, actually, yeah. I guess before him, but his property is in front of right. us. Is, he, is she near where Roxanne was, up on the hill with the trailer, over the left where your brother is, or that other house, the third house in the middle there? Well, no. Because I can't tell anything from what you've done. Yeah, I don't. I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I can't. Okay. Pardon? That means nothing. Did you say you have a better map? Well, uh, this I is. I didn't bring it. Oh, okay. All right. Do, do you? <laughs> this. Okay. This is Michael's property. Here. Yeah. Okay. This is our lot. Okay. So he, this is the road. There's a right of way through his property. Yeah, gotcha. To the front of our property. And is this here. the driveway that goes to his? This is the road. This right here? Road. Yeah, okay. And then this is a right of way to the middle of his property. To go to yours. To get to ours. Yeah. Where's so, the property that says 87? Let me, pa can I pass this so everybody can take sure. a look at it? Yeah, let me tell you. Did you read the house? Did you read the house? 87 on it? Oh, good. Yeah. I hope so. Is that the address? Yeah, I think it was 87 or maybe it was 187. Yeah, an old sign, an old wooden sign. Since yeah. since we're the only ones here, this is fine. But okay, okay. For, there's just people watching at home. If you could just say who you are, since uh, we're Michael Olson, so I'm the land hunter. Okay. Once upon a time, my father owned all this land. Okay, so it was almost 100 acres, and it got all chopped up eventually. And the way it got chopped up is very confusing because at the time they had to you had to have road frontage, which was route not uh, right. marble road. So the way it got chopped up, it made it really difficult. So now you end up with a, a road, Olson Road, which the town of Prado Road doesn't want any part of. <laughs> <laughs> uh, That's a lot that of That goes up through, and then you have right of ways off of it, and uh, Act 250 permits had to be met. And it made it very difficult for uh, people to, my father, uh, either so to sell the property and the work, yeah. to, for people to build and get the correct spacing right away. It made it difficult for someone like me that has alpacas. Now I got twice as many fences. The road goes up from Route 9 and it goes all the way up to the school. She she's says she's not on the road. She's not on Route 9 or Marble Road. She's mm -hmm. also not on Olson Drive. She has her own drive off of that and right away. Off of Olson. Most, most of the houses up there have that. She's got her own drive off of Olson. That's correct. No, I know. I'm trying to figure out. No. She does it. She does it. Where's oh, is this where the house burned oh. down a few oh. years ago? Oh. Going the steep up. That was at the bottom. Okay. It burned down at the bottom. Okay. Okay. So you actually go down there. Do you want to see? Uh, oh. Yeah. I'm, I'm, sorry. I'm sorry. I grew up in Marlboro, and for me, that's always how I identified that road. Yeah, okay. Hey, Joe. So you're actually in behind the uh, line. I, I own, see, I own all the way from Route 9, clear back to what used okay. to be the property of the town of Browder owned, which was the Boyd lot. So okay. So this I ended up is, this is right, right up the middle. Yeah, I know. This is the road. Okay. Yeah. And a big piece in the back. Okay. See, okay. Okay. And all these other so houses come off. Does this then? I'll need to bring up bad memory. This would be this. Yeah. Would be yeah. No. This. Um, yeah. Right. No. Okay. So this is right here. It's history. Which is my friend. Is. Which is yeah. right here. Which is on the back of his property. So it's a private okay. road. Yes. So this is Route 9. No, tried to okay. Okay. This is Olson. I couldn't find it. I've never heard of Olson. While you're at the microphone, were you planning to comment on this application? Oh, I had some questions, yes. Yeah, then this is her okay. private drive off. Let us ask our, let her do it. We ask ours first, and then I'll recognize okay. you again. Okay, now I understand. Yeah. Yeah. Let her explain what she's trying to do. This okay. yeah. Sorry. 
So now we now that we sort of have an idea of where this is a little better. Um, were, were you done telling us about your project? We interrupted you, I know. Well, um, as Michael said, when the property was divided up, it's kind of a difficult area. And we are at the base of a pretty steep incline. We have 12 acres, but our frontage is right, like we're the only level here in the And then it goes steep up behind us. So the, we were pretty limited with where we could put things. Um, there's only about 300 square feet in the front. Mm -hmm. We have the well, the house, the um, septic system. And when the driveway comes in there. Is this about a three acre lot? Excuse me? How, how big? 12.4 no. acres. Oh, really? Okay. But it's mostly in back of us, the acreage. Oh, okay. Right in the okay. front okay. corner. Because um, there's your hunting. If you looked at well, that piece that I gave you, it showed you that um, we're right down in the small corner, and then the lot goes up behind okay. us up the hill. Yeah, I'm just so, trying to get an idea of the scale. So when you come in here, the right at the um, the right away brings you to the the piece of the property. Mm -hmm. The house is on one side. There's the well on the other. On the right, there's the leaching field and the septic on the left. The only place you can pull in is right there is where we park the cars. That's where the gravel driveway is marked? That we're in, yes. We, and we, we how pull in, we how steep is that right there? Uh, it's about, it's pretty, well, we had that leveled off a little bit. We had some work on, you know, mm -hmm. they uh, leveled that area off, but it's still steep. Okay. I mean, where we park is level, but right, right where the driveway ends, you start going up. So this is about, I think it's what's it called, one on five, it's a 30% grade or something, it's, it's, um, it's 20% grade. Yeah, 20% grade going up, and then it gets steeper as you get further back. Um, the only place you could really put a driveway is right where we park, but you have to move it a little bit more to give us room to pull around the driveway. We have on the, um, that on the right hand side of the property is a 25 foot area we can set back. So she's got 25 feet. On the front, where we are in the field, there, there's a there's, um, the pasture, there's like a little tree line, there's a stream, and then it comes up, and that's where we are. And if we did it um, 40 feet set back, it wouldn't give us really enough room for the two car garage because we'd be bumping into kind of where the leaching field is, and we don't want to uh, compromise the leaching field. Smart. So we would rather do a, like a 25 foot setback in the front, especially because it's rolling, it's, there's nothing there. We're not even really on the street. Right. You know, we're on the back of the pasture. So we just didn't so think that that would be. Can you think that it's 75 feet? Just Can I ask a question? Mm -hmm. uh, not so much of you, but uh, the planning office. Over here. One, this says request for a variance to yeah. construct a two car garage in the front yard setback. It, to me, anything that is, in a, is a setback issue is a waiver, not a variance. So after we just right. had this, right? Wouldn't, wouldn't she be asking for a dimensional waiver for the setback? You can't get a dimensional waiver. You can't get a dimensional waiver for a front yard setback. Only for a side yard or a rear yard, mm -hmm. but not front yard? Well, I must have missed that one. Um, so it needs to be a variance. So then technically, based on the class, we just took at 430. I'm going to tell you, you, you know, we, ju we just went over a material that said, who cares if you have a garage? You know, you make it where it's supposed to be or not. Now, I'm not trying to sound indifferent to her application because part of me thinks that's absurd. I don't know how many people here have let any idea what me, the visual looks like of her spot, but... Let me explain to her what you're talking about, just because she wasn't there for it. Um, we have legal training every so often, and today we did a training on variances, and that training consists of going through Supreme Court cases, and the Supreme Court will either say, great job, so-and-so development review board, you correctly identified the criteria for a variance. Or more often they'll say, terrible job, so-and-so development review board, you completely misapplied the law, this is the law on a variance. 
So the reason we had this training was to try to use the Supreme Court's decision so that we understand better where you can and can't have variances. The basic message from the Supreme Court in all these cases was that getting a variance is very difficult and the criteria are very strict and should be strictly applied. And there were a couple of different Supreme Court cases which we reviewed, Sorg versus North Hero Zoning Board, which is 135 Vermont 423, and Henry DeRoy variance <coughs> application. I guess that was an environmental court decision from 2010. And both of them said that the second criterion of the law governing variances there's, the, the law and variances sets forth five things you've got to satisfy. That's why your application had those five questions and what, you know, what, will it alter the character of the neighborhood, et cetera. Well, one of those criteria requires that there be no possibility that the building can, develop, can be developed in conformance with the bylaws and no reasonable use can be made of the existing property without a variance. And what the Supreme Court said in those cases was that if there's already a house there, the property's being used reasonably already. And we can't say that a garage is necessary to the reasonable use of the property. They, they singled out garages. Mm -hmm. So effectively what they're saying is if it can be used as a house without a garage, we're not letting a variance allow someone to get a garage because a variance can only be for something that's necessary to make the property work rather than become a complete wasteland, an unusable lot. And that's what Mr. Bushy is referring to because th these are the cases we just went through. So uh, not to spring a bunch of law on you that I'm sure you didn't expect here, but I wanted you to sort of have an idea of what he's referring to because we all know what he's talking about, but you don't and the public probably wouldn't either. Except for the environmental lawyers. <laughs> Unless there's an environmental lawyer in the world. So, um, I'm not, I wasn't even saying I agree with that. But I was just saying we just got hammered for an hour. It's a, it's a, it's a legal issue that's definitely going to weigh on your application. We're not saying which way we're going to rule, but that's something that's on Joe's mind and my mind certainly. Are there are there other questions about the application? I do. Yeah, yeah, you already talked to Mr. Uh, <laughs> yeah, um, I had a question in reference to the footage. Uh, that she's got 24 square feet. That would make it about a six by four on the front page of her application. Just put the application down. 24 feet square, I think, is probably what she Well, means. 25 by 25. Oh, down the bottom. Yeah, it says 24 square feet. Oh, yes. Well, thank you. We don't really have any, like the gentleman before me, any specific plans yet. I wanted to make sure before I did anything that we could go ahead and build one. But and we could, um, when you wrote that, did you mean a 24 by 24 foot square? The garage is going to be 24 yeah. feet on each side? I think that's her setbacks. No, the it's setback's a, a 25. 25. Yeah. She put construction two bed works, 24 square feet. Uh, on your application, oh, on the first yeah. page, yeah. it says well, what work just, is planned. I I'm not sure why I wrote that. But I, I was talking to the person who was going to build the garage. I might have misunderstood what he said. So do you know? Do you know roughly the size of each wall, the length? Like I said, it's not even. It's good. I'd have to. Well, let, let me ask you this: Is it meant just to snuggle? I might be able to answer the question. I haven't talked to the guy. We talked oh. to Tim. Uh, yeah. Okay. I believe he was looking at like a normal two car, twenty-four by twenty-four. Right. Twenty-four okay. by twenty-four. Right. Okay. So yeah, that's what it would be. 24. Okay. So that wouldn't be 24 square. No, right. <laughs> it wouldn't be 24. I get it. But I had the same question. And, and just, just a quick question. Anything above the garage? Excuse me? Anything above the garage other than a roof? No. I mean, in the peak, we'll probably use for storage, you know. Okay. Up, uh, but we're but, not going to But no in law second. apartments or anything no. like that. Okay. Mike, did you create the lot that she purchased? No. Okay. That was, that was done before. My father had it okay. in the right of way, and everything that goes to her property was there. What constitutes the property line between yours and hers? Well, there's actually a, there's 
stake in the ground by a big rock on, on the one side of her house. But is it a stone wall, a brook, or tree? No, there is a anything? stream there, stream, yeah. and there's a, a row of trees. And gotcha. the trees, that's one of my concerns that she doesn't cut any trees down. Okay, so. uh, so some of the trees have like these old three hash marks in it. Yeah. That, uh, Those are old property line hashes, right. And then there's another. Uh, it, the did you say you talked with Tim Hamilton as, when he was there? I, I'm curious myself from pulling the tape. I'm curious how you how you ended up with knowing you needed 25 feet instead of the 40, because uh, the two yeah. different maps here have got some like yeah. neither one of them is exactly a surveyor's map, and I'm just wondering if maybe like uh, in our thing we learned that the the environmental court really examines all possibilities. I'm wondering if you don't maybe have more room there than 25 feet. I'm wondering if I'm not saying you have 40, but I'm wondering how much do you have? Do you have yeah. enough for a one car garage instead of a two? Do you? You know what I'm saying? We're I mean, going by the setbacks. I went, Michael showed me where the two stakes were, right. um, and we went from that line back. Tim went, Tim um, went from that line back with we had Joe with them to measure um, where the 40 foot setback would be. Yeah. And then he went from there to the to the leach field. To the to leach field, and he he it would be push him about 10 feet into the area where he didn't yeah. want to be in there. For so a 24 square garage. For 24. For two car garage. For a two car right. garage. Um, it, it's kind of an expensive proposition for just a one car garage, especially because we have more than one car. Right. So it would be, you know, not a really cost effective thing to build a one car garage. Uh, it, it seems like 25 feet from the both the side and the front would give it to us. It doesn't seem like it would, um, it wouldn't impact the stream or any trees because he's already. We already have the footprint for where we'd be. Once again, while we are all very sympathetic to yeah, it's not right. cost effective as a reason, the, our statutes does not allow us to consider that. Right. That whether, whether it costs you a million dollars to build it or a dollar, there's no provision for us to consider that as a reason to alter our decision. We can feel good about it, but not. we don't have the you know, the instruction to do it for that reason. So me, me, the mitigator, I'm trying to figure out how could you squeeze that in there? Could you get one car? Could she get one car with a carport? You know, I mean, I I don't know. Uh, I, I hear what you want to do, but it doesn't. And I don't doubt, I don't doubt Tim Hamilton's pulling of the tape either. But I, I just wonder, is there some other space there? Is it there really is there some other? If you would come, if you would look at the piece of property, the what way it the is, um, it goes up. I mean, right. there's the leach field yeah. that goes up, and you know, there's really no place else you could put. Mm -hmm. And you can't really can't attach it to the house. Thing. I can't picture what the house no, looks like. No, the house is. It's even like when you look at. We go into our basement, and then by the by the back of the house, we're on the first. Right. Floor. So you got a slope. You so cut we have a up. real slope. We're kind of built into the slope. You've been standing for five minutes. Where's the Let's front stay. door? No, it's open. Well, <laughs> I can sit. I can stand. I can. Well, it says seasonal. Mm -hmm. Is the seasonal? I have been an education at the same time. It, is so. the is the seasonal spring what's keeping you from going on the other side over by the well? No, that's just a, no. The seasonal spring won't be a. No, okay, so then why can't you go on that side? No, no, that's not where the well. Well, look, look, look what you've drawn here. You drew in here, yeah. here's yeah. the house. Well, here's the right way. How would we, we'd have to, this is very steep. Well, right, but this oh. is your property here, but right? This is all steep. This is oh, like, okay. this is like we go in here, it's the basement. By the time we get here, we've already gone up. Like, where's the front door? Well, it front sounds door. like we've got an earth burn garage in there, huh, Mike? We go, um, we go in the cellar here. Mm -hmm. the front I could dig a hole up for a that. A set of so it's a walkout yeah, basement. It's, it's a walkout basement. So how about a walkout garage over here? But how would you, you'd have to. You'd have to dig a hole? But the, a well is right here. Yeah, it looks like it's always back. I mean, I'm just wondering about, you know, this well, way. On this side. I mean, I don't the, know what you got for space driveway. to relocate your drive a little bit. Or where, or where really 40 is. And how, how, from the front of the house to the line, how far, how far was that? Do you remember? Here it says 175. There it says 60. 60. Right. Yeah. right it's this 175. One, this, this is not accurate. Okay. That's not accurate. Okay. 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 So okay. okay. That was about this was so, so this is all. Oh, this is what we just. Right. No, you can really can't. Um, 
this is very steep. It's like this is four terraces. Yeah, the land is the stream, then we have one terrace, then we have rocks, then we have another terrace, then we have rocks, then we have another terrace, then we have But I thought, but is that there? Or is this over here is all flat? This the driveway pulls in here. Right, this is the leach field. No, you go up a slope. There's uh, stone steps. You go upstairs here. There's a set of stairs to get up to the front door, and then there's another stairs to get into the house. To be really honest, you would rather see a more accurate. More accurate? Yes, than, than hand drawn one. Well, I, I just told you. You mean you know. the yeah. engineers drawing? Yep. Yeah. I'd like to see something else besides that. Well. Can I ask a question real quick? Yeah, let's, let's let her go back to the microphone yeah. here so we can have this a bit more normal. Do we, to have a two-car garage, do you need 25 by 25 or could... No, I mean, how wide is a car? Okay, could I ask a question? That's a good point. Um, so, thing Tim said to the two-car garage, you have to be able to get in there and open the doors. Um, that's why he said 24 by 24. He wanted to give enough space in the middle and on either side so you can get out of the cars and open the doors and have room. I suppose we could um, probably try to make a smaller garage and do something else. And if we just went to the 40 foot setback and built from there, then we wouldn't need a variance and we could probably just mm -hmm. play with it some other way. Yep. Either make it so that you couldn't get out of the car on one side, you had to climb over or whatever. <laughs> well, we're not ruling one way or another. We're just no, asking. I'm just a saying, um, you know, I, but to go into um, it's it's really not feasible given the way the land is to get another drawing and putting the garage around to the other side of the house. It's just the lay of the land just doesn't um, allow for that. And I don't really think he'd want another driveway going up and around that side <laughs> either. Did you ask all your questions? No. Yeah, well, I, I just want to make sure everybody's, yeah, sure. everybody's exhausted their questions here. Are we all set with the board? Well, almost. <laughs> uh, the property line, do you know exactly where the front property line is? Yes. That one we do, there's some we do not. Okay, is that it right on the edge of the road? Is that where it is? No, near the road. Uh, it actually kind of follows the little stream in the front. Um, it, the picture looks like it's very square, but it's a little bit of an angle, meaning closer to, to the front on the side where she's looking to put the garage. So it's closer there. For, for my own, for my own so two cents worth, in, in the absence of a site visit, some real clear pictures would have really helped here. Yeah. I didn't bring a map and I probably should have. Well, it wasn't really on you to do that. No. So. Why don't you give us your questions, sir? All right. So, well, just, well, some of my questions was, Nothing told me that it was one story, one and a half, two stories. Um, mm -hmm. I think you're looking at a one story or one and a half. One story, one story yeah. gable roof, right? And that was my other thing. Was it, what kind of roof was going to be on it? Um, shingles, metal. Because I'm going to be able to see it from my house. Windows, doors, siding, color, stain. Uh, nothing in the nothing in the description that I could find helped me out. I didn't want to see that it turned into an apartment or a living space or a second floor so or later so on. Not so much maybe house. when they're there, but I don't know what's going to happen so next. And just now, quickly, do you know what the siding? I was going to be board and bath, just okay. rough board and bath, and then Tim was going to actually yep. mill. And what kind of... Tim has uh, a sawmill. Tim has a sawmill. Yeah. Yeah. What kind of uh, roofing? From, probably metal makers. Okay. Uh, You go ahead. I'm sorry to interrupt. Well, uh, so oh. along with that was the, where the 25 so foot it is. Does it actually mean up to the wall of the building? It overhangs. I don't know how that's figured from mm -hmm. the property line. I want to make sure it's from the property line, not from the stream. Do you know where the, the stream is? So the stream stuck at, at, when the stream at, it was level. You go up the hill from the stream. And it, the driveway's level. So that would be 10 foot back from that level that the driveway would, that the um, garage would start. It wouldn't be right on the edge. Tim likes to leave 10 feet around the garage to be able to walk around the garage to be able to access it. So it wouldn't be right on, it wouldn't be right on the stream. Well some of the concern is of course water. I mean the, the stream 
it does go down, feeds a pond, a couple wells eventually. So, mm. so it was just a concern. I didn't know how big it was going to be. It was going to sure. be a second floor and rent it out, or a mother-in-law place with the or something. Right. Like that. Yeah. Um, and also so that there was some some property the there when they built their house before, the and uh, oh. I wanted to make sure that they they know and, and that using some of that property, my property, for parking or gardening or planting trees or anything. I don't want to end up in an adverse possession issue uh, or advised uh, possession issue uh, about the title of the property. Like that. So you can explain that to her. We talked to her, well, we talked to her a little bit about it. Let me the way the property is, I have some fences right there. She has part of it. She might have some people mow it sometimes or put some gardens in it sometimes. Yeah. So I openly let her do that. But it's not going to you know, be in their property. Because I work at BY and my job ends in May and I don't know what I'm going to do. I might have to sell it. So I need to know that the property line is there and I need to know that I'm protected. My sure. Property. For what it's worth, adverse possession takes right. 15 years. Right. Um, let me share my impressions of this application and if if the board disagrees with me it may be better to go to deliberative session but it's my view that those supreme court cases that are train that mr slayson brought to us for our training highlighted the fact that if a property works without a garage mm -hmm. it's a non-starter to get a variance to get a garage because it's not necessary for the property I'm terribly sorry, but I think the law. So I could put a one-car garage there, though. Yeah. As long as you, as long as you, as long as you didn't need a variance. Right. right. So I wouldn't need a variance for that. I would go with it within the zoning. Well, I'm just saying my own opinion. I'm one vote, remember, on a board of seven, right. and I want to take the temperature of the rest of the board to see if they think I'm being reasonable. So the only thing you're talking about is the variance, so that the setback would have. I, I would vote against this only because the requirements for a variance, as explained to us tonight, are very strict. I the legal. If, if you're not in that 40 foot setback, you don't need a variance, and thus those requirements are not implicated at all. And as a matter of fact, if you're not in that setback, she wouldn't even come before us for a two car garage, right? Right. Yeah. Right. Then I wouldn't even have to come. Okay. Right. Um, I mean, it's a different story if there's an in-law apartment over there. Then it's not necessarily administrative approval, I don't think. But if she's just doing a two-car garage and she's not in that variance, and she's not on your property, we'd have to do site plan if there was an apartment above it. For an accessory apartment, that would also be administrative. Oh, you sure, get that's one a state thing now. Yeah. There's no. One. There's going to be yeah. no. Well, it's just, it's just a garage. There's nothing up there. Just okay. for I, I'm only bringing this because I know that right. the, the interested party here was interested in this. Well, so that, I want no, to talk about. It would not happen on the second floor. So I, before we get into this, does the rest of the board think that my view is somewhat right, somewhat wrong? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. I mean, we. I'm sorry. It's bad timing, um, but the, Actually, the, the law seems fairly clear here on the variance issue. Um, but if you're not in that setback, it becomes very easy, and you don't even need to see us. Um, so I, I got to ask for a motion to deny application 2015-248. So moved. So moved. Second. Okay. And, and Mr. Chair, just place it as a positive. Yeah. What's that? It, it should be a positive motion, so it should be moved to approve yeah, the variance. Then we go. We can't deny applications. No. Is this like there's no more second place kind of thing? <laughs> <laughs> it has to be made in the positive and denied. No, I'm just yes. sorry. I got, so young, we have, I got young kids yeah. and so all this. So we have to move to approve and then vote against it. Is what you're trophy. saying? Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So do you understand what's happening? Yeah, you're just talking about the way you go. We're, 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 we're going to frame right. this as a motion to approve it, and right. then we're all going to vote against it. It's right. Procedural. <laughs> so, who made the motion? Somebody. Who made, 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 made the motion? Hold on, hold on. Who made the motion? Say you withdraw your motion. I didn't make a motion. I think it was error. You made. I think it was error. Yeah. Whoever said so move. You got to withdraw my motion. Okay. So there's no more pending motion. Let's start okay. with a clean sheet. Oh my God. I move we approve. 
the variance for 2015-248. Okay. Wait. I second that. Okay, so as a matter of discussion, just to be clear, if you don't think that this deserves a variance, you got to vote no, not yes. Because we vote yes a lot. We don't want to screw this up. Um, so all those in favor? That's none. Any opposed? Nay. Nay. Okay, um, so the, it, 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 the, the motion to approve application 2015-248 fails by unanimous vote. No offense. Uh, it's just our understanding of the law. Um, well, yeah, absolutely. Your, your map is right there. And just as a future matter, if you have any questions, you can call Mr. Bannon, and he's an invaluable resource. You can put your, your contract in the well, too. Well, I don't know if he gave me the advice on what I should put before you. Maybe isn't that bad. Well, yeah, so. <laughs> I assure you. Because I thought what I gave you was asking for his advice. So. I, I assure you. I assure you, his advice is invaluable. He, he probably didn't anticipate that today's training would hit right on the type right. of application that you're filing either. Um, but uh, trust me, it can be helpful to you. Um, so if there's nothing else for us to do tonight. I think it's appropriate for a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Okay. Aye. Any discussion? <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? <laughs>